right, everyone, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to upgrade the stereo in your first gen Honda Pilot. So I'm sitting in my 2005 Pilot in a previous video. There's a link in the description. I showed you how to remove the factory stereo and I installed this Atoto brand um, Android navigation system. And while it is a budget friendly unit and is a decent unit for the price, Today I'm going to be showing you the best unit probably money can buy for not only your first gen Honda Pilot, but it's just a universal doubled in stereo that can be used theoretically in many, many vehicles. But again, this video will be specific to the first generation Honda Pilot. All right, so the first step is I need to get the old stereo out. This is basically a similar procedure to factory stereo. So there's this little plastic cover here. I just take a little flat blade screwdriver, pop that in there, and that pops out. Basically what that does is that gives me a little bit of leverage to pull. This whole top piece is just clipped in place. It also helps to have like a, like a non-marring plastic trim removal tool. So if I reach in here, Okay, kind of get that side part out. You don't just want to pull because you don't want to break this side. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of get this under here. You hear the clips kind of pop there. Okay. There's a few wires we need to disconnect, obviously. And this procedure, right, this piece part right here, specific to the 03 to 05 uh, pilot, but the 06 to 08 is very similar. All right, so you can see now that we've got that out. On the side here, there's a, looks like an eight millimeter um, bolt on the two sides and then up here as well, there's like a screw. Take these out you want to be careful that you do not drop them down in the dash if you do they will be gone forever all right so that pretty much frees up the stereo Make so you can remove it aftermarket adapter harness and plug now, if you watched my first video, you saw that I actually installed a amplifier behind here. This Boss amplifier that fit behind that radio. And the reason I did that is because the subwoofer, the factory subwoofer, is powered off of the factory head unit. So you have to install a separate amp to retain the subwoofer function. Um, this was the input. This was my uh, speaker output going to the symbol from the back. And this was a power feed that I split off of this adapter harness here. Now, obviously, I'm going to be changing this up in this video. And I probably will not even be retaining the factory subwoofer because I've decided that it is a piece of junk. And if I want to add a subwoofer in the future, what, I'll, what I'm going to do is run this lead down there near the glove box area that way is it's accessible to me and i can put an aftermarket subwoofer in later on so the only thing i'll have to get out of this area right now would be the remote turn on wire coming off of the stereo and the rca cables coming off the new stereo all right so open the box to the uh joining stereo and here's what came in the package got an optional frame um, external microphone, GPS antenna, a couple of USB extension cords. This is a 4G LTE antenna, which I will not be using. It doesn't really work well in the United States, but uh, if you're in an area where uh, the cell bands that are built into the stereo, um, you can just add a SIM card directly into the stereo and have internet access independent of your phone. So there's the second LTE antenna. All right, so here is the actual unit itself. 
you can see nice double din seven inch display it does have the physical volume control and physical buttons for source navigation back and home this is a card slot there's a re recessed reset button this is a microphone port right here so when you're installing this you have the option to use the external microphone which you can then place somewhere like up here in the windshield run it down the pillar or you can just use the built-in microphone i do not do a lot of voice calls um, i've tested both i don't see a huge difference i usually just use the built-in microphone some people report they have better luck with phone calls with the external microphone okay so looking at the wiring so joying um, sent me this plug and play wiring harness for the Honda Pilot. So the connector is the same. So when I wired up the Toto one, I used this aftermarket, um, you know, connector that I had to make all the connections, you know, solder and tape everything. And then I also added a, another additional pin right here. If you look at the bottom of the harness, directly next to the red main power wire um, I added this pin and that is for the steering wheel and the factory steering wheel controls and then I connected it to the key one input on here well joining already has all these connections made the only thing I noticed different is that pin goes to key two and then key one goes to this brown wire below <clears throat> and to the right of the pink key two wire so when we get into programming um we'll see if it works if not we'll have to switch around uh those two wires not a big deal all right so this pretty much is plug and play uh, this plugs into the back of the joint stereo this plugs into your factory um honda harness like i said i know that works for 03 to 05 might be slightly different to 06 to 08 um you have the amp connector so we're going to connect this to the blue wire that I just pulled up. So I ran a wire from the glove compartment to here. Like I said, that's just gonna be for future use. Keep everything in there. Also, I ran one of the included USB extension cables at the same time that I just leave in the glove box. That's good if you need to put a hard drive or a flash drive or something you want to connect to the stereo. The other one I'm going to run down in the dash, which I already did on my last installation. It runs down. It's gonna be hard to see here turn the inner side but you can see I've got a USB port that I it's a circular one I'll leave a link in the description I just drilled a hole and put that in there so I can plug a cable in and that's what I use for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay which this unit supports very well it also does support wireless Android Auto and wireless CarPlay if you have a high enough firmware on your Android phone so We'll get into that a little bit more later. For now, we'll continue with the installation. Again, not much to this. Um, for now, I'm not keeping the factory subwoofer. Now would be the time to add a backup camera. Um, I did add a backup camera. I did not do a video on that. Uh, basically, it just terminates up here with an RCA connection. Right here. And then we have a power feed coming off the wire that is the trigger from the backup lights that will switch the head unit to display the backup camera. So that's really all I have to do is make the backup camera connections, um, wire in this extra wire to my amp connector. On the harness they give me uh, the backup camera wire, I'll hook up to the, it says back. Obviously that rear view RCA plugs into the rear view camera in wire. And then they included this antenna connector, which we do not need. Basically it would adapt uh, like a little later model or different model Honda to where you could plug it into the joining unit. Uh, the factory Honda antenna connector will plug directly into the back of the joining unit. All right, so let's just talk a little more about wiring for just a second. And one problem I discovered with the harness that they sent here. So like I mentioned, the harness that they sent had that little extension uh, that was to adapt the antenna connector. 
Well, this first gen pilot uses right next to this red wire, there should be a blue wire right there. And that's for the antenna amplifier. So there is an antenna amplifier like most Hondas that is elsewhere in the vehicle that you have to provide 12 volts power to when the radio is on. And this harness that they give does not do that. So you have two options. You can either just cut, like I've done, cut this blue wire out. Um, and then you can wire this antenna wire here directly to the factory harness. So if you look on the back of this, this large blue connector, you'll see some wires. On the very end here is this yellow looking wire with a white stripe right here on the end. If we cut this back here a little bit, that way we can always reconnect it if we undo this and put the factory stereo in. If we cut it back here and trim this off, we can wire that blue wire directly to this wire to power the factory Honda antenna amplifier. So that's one option. The other option is you just buy the Metra or the Skosh aftermarket harness it has the blue wire already there. And then you just use the joying harness that came in the box. It's just the end that plugs into the radio and then blunt cut wires, or it will have some other connector that you can cut off and just make your one-to-one -one connections. Not a big deal either way. All right, guys and girls. So here's the part that, the only part of this installation that's gonna make it just a little bit tricky. That is the actual size of the unit. So it seems like in the United States, we use our double din sizing is slightly smaller than everywhere else in the world, apparently. So like I said, they give you this frame that you can use, which will make it fit certain vehicles. Um, certain vehicles it will fit without the frame. Um, in our case, so here is what the pilot looks like the frame on the pilot. So if I put that on there, you can see there's a large gap around the whole thing. And then if I put this on here, there's still a gap on the sides and it makes it too large this way. So what do we do? Well, if you buy an aftermarket kit, which is what I had on the Utoto, this Metra kit right here, that's meant to go around it and make it adapt perfectly to the pilot uh, dashboard. This, like I said, here in the United States, we have our doubled in sizing is slightly different. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm going to have to trim the plastic around the four sides, just open it up a little bit so it fits just around this head unit. And then that is what these clips hook to and actually bolt the whole unit in um, to the dash. That is what retains it in the dash. So again, I would not let this discourage you. You just need to have like a Dremel with a cutoff and just what I'm gonna do is very, very carefully trim around the edges and try to make it look good and take my time because obviously this is something that you're gonna see every time you look at the stereo. All right, so basically here's my trimmed up piece. Uh, it's not perfect, but it looks pretty good. I just basically opened it up a little bit on three sides, just to leave one nice edge for the top that you'll see. And I kind of sanded any rough spots off. All right, so here's how it looks on the stereo. Go ahead and put the two screws on each side. Now we can plug in all of our wiring and install it. All right, so alternatively, like what I did to fix that issue that I was talking about, the powered antenna is, I went in and took the old wiring harness, I just stuck a paper clip in, pulled the pin out, and then put the wire in here. So now I will strip these back and wire these together 
and that will allow me to use the joining harness and retain the factory antenna amplifier. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna place our GPS antenna that came with the kit. I used a little bit of double-sided tape and I stuck it up. If you reach back straight back here, there's this plastic vent for the HVAC system. And as long as there's no metal between the sky and the top of the GPS antenna, you're fine. So you don't have to have it out on the dash as long as it's just plastic dash. I just stuck it right on top of that vent as far forward as I could. So that leaves the wiring to hook up to the GPS antenna. I have my two USB ports. Again, one goes down under here. One goes into the glove box. I've got my wiring harness ready to go. Uh, backup camera, trigger, wire is wired in. So that's pretty much all that I'm gonna be hooking up. Again, I will be hooking up the subwoofer for future use. So again, I just, I'm gonna have this single RCA right here that plugs into the sub output. It's a mono sub output on the joining stereo. And again, the trigger wire and all this stuff just runs to the glove box for now. Okay, so while I'm making these connections, a few things to note. This little thing here would be the SIM card slot if you're gonna use it. And if you wanna install an optional dash camera, there's another USB port that is on a wire here. And that has a timed output. So after you shut down the vehicle, that is powered for, I don't know the exact time, probably like 20, 30 minutes. Um, to provide power to the dash camera while you're parking. We just want to make sure that these wires right here, where it says can out, the green wire is connected to the key wire. That's because we're not using any kind of a CAN bus interface. These are just your antennas for your Wi-Fi. Okay, so we're gonna uncover the subwoofer port. It's this one on the far right here. And that will plug in or mono sub output. You do have an optional uh, toss link connection and a coaxial digital output. So you have optical and coaxial digital outputs. If you want to use it with uh, advanced digital um, external amplifiers, join to support that. Something that's very unique. I talk about that in a lot of the videos. Okay, so here's our USB port that runs to the glove box. I'm going to plug that into the bottom port and the one that says OTG next to it, this top port here says OTG, that is going to be plugged into the USB port that you use for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. In my case, it's that one that's wired up under the dash there. Okay, so GPS is connected. Don't forget your uh, external antenna connection there. And then for the AM FM radio, Again, these are optional for LTE, and you have uh, RCA pre-outs, um, just like any aftermarket stereo. Uh, it's really raining outside, so sorry if you can hear that. Um, so here's the cables. I want to make sure these are pulled out to the sides. Those obviously connect to that faceplate. Uh, make sure all your wires are tucked neatly behind the unit. Now we'll go ahead and reinstall the bolts we took out. Here's a little tip, put a little piece of electric tape to hold the screw in the socket when you go to put it back in. So go ahead and plug everything back in. Plug. As you can see, the fit and finish looks pretty excellent. All right, so I've got the unit on. First thing I'm going to do is update the firmware. And the reason I'm going to do that is this has latest firmware, but I want to change the UI. So 
this is a good opportunity to show you. This is considered the old UI. So if you search on Google, join firmware update, it will take you to a website that you can download the firmware. So the old UI, like this is what the radio looks like. Um, this is basically what it looks like. The, the launcher, the screen is customizable. So basically to update the firmware, I'm going to reach in. I have extracted the firmware update, the zip file onto a USB drive. I'm gonna plug it in. And then the head unit will automatically do the firmware update here, you'll see. All right, firmware detected, start. All right, I was done. We're gonna remove a device, which means the thumb drive, and then we're gonna let it reboot, and it will boot into our new operating system. All right, so this is what the new UI looks like. I'm gonna change some stuff around. I'm just gonna move these around a little bit so the clock is in the middle. All right, so a couple things I like to do right off the rip, some settings specific. So we're gonna go into settings, device, sound. I'm gonna turn off the keypad tone, that beeping every time you touch. See, so now I can touch stuff and it doesn't do that. Okay, so if you did have an amp connected, you would turn the amplifier on. Since I don't have it connected yet, we're not gonna do that. There's specific subwoofer settings you can see that you can dial in. This is where you can connect to Wi-Fi. Um, there's a whole bunch of different things. I'm not gonna go through everything. I'm just gonna show you the specific stuff we need. Real quick though, I'll show you device info. Okay, so we're running Android 10. There is an Android 12 update that you can download after this. The only thing it adds is, uh, I believe it's uh, tethering over a connection, uh, USB connection. In the factory settings, password is 3368. Okay, so we don't want any of this set because uh, we do not have the canvas connected. This is, everything is manual. You can add a custom boot screen. Um, the only two choices are powered by Android and joying on the new firmware. Um, you can put a custom logo, I believe, on there, but you should really never see that. So it's not that big of a deal because it comes on instantly. All right, so what we need to set up now is steering wheel controls. So if you look in here, in the applications, the SWC app. All right, so basically, we're gonna start by hitting the X, clearing everything out. Um, the harness is plug and play, the one from Joyang, it does work. So I'm gonna press and hold the volume button up on the steering wheel, and then press the volume up key. Now you can make Reassign your steering wheel controls to whatever you want. Um, I'm gonna hold volume down, press the volume down button, okay? I'm gonna hold the channel forward button, obviously. I'm hold that down, select channel forward. And then the last one is the mode button. So if you wanna program it like it would come from the factory, I'm gonna hold mode down and press source. Okay, now again, you can assign that mode button to any one of these options. So if you want it to be um, like the Bluetooth mic, or to always go to FM when you hit mode, or maybe you want the home screen to pop up when you hit mode, whatever. Just make sure we hit check. So now I wanna hit volume up. You can see the volume goes up and down. If I hit the channel button, well, it's not gonna do anything, but if I hit mode, open the radio, and then if I hit channel, you'll see it scrolls through the presets. So speaking of, so this is what the, obviously, the radio looks like now. Let's see. So it's a completely different look. If I turn on the headlights, you can see that it changes 
to black and the button lights come on. So that is the behavior that I want. Uh, you can set your brightness. So the brightness is all the way up. And then when the headlights come on, I want my brightness to go all the way down. That way we have the most contrast. Okay, same thing if you look at the home menu, when you turn on your headlights, the icons go clear, it's kind of a neat effect. It's easier on the eyes at night. So that's how we get to that. Now, again, if you want to change, let's see here. All right, so backlight control. We don't need to change that, but you'd want small light control to be off, and that means it uses the buttons. Uh, let's see here. I set my default volume around. We'll start with like around six and turn off. Lantern settings this is where we want to change the lights, so we're going to take it off of auto. And then you have to turn on the parking lights to be able to see the options. Uh, the factory Honda coloring on this first gen pilot, the 03 to 05, is kind of like a greenish blue. So you can kind of play with these settings a little bit to get close. So it looks pretty close to the factory color. I'm happy with that for now. All right, so again, since we Made sure to connect that wire, that's how, if you didn't, you might notice very bad radio reception. If you didn't connect that external amp wire, you might barely get a little bit of reception, but it's not gonna be good. I can already see issue. So we'll go in here to the settings. We're gonna set this for USA, RDS on, and it'll go back. All right, now let's scroll a little bit more correctly. Play messages of hope from Zanzone Neighborhood Church at the Muskegon okay. Family YMCA. So you can set stations just by pressing and holding the button. If you press and hold that, it will seek. I'm inside a pole barn right now, so I don't have the greatest radio reception. But you can go through and set your stations. Okay, so obviously you can go in and set your time, uh, set your time zone, date time. Um, it will update off of GPS and keep it in sync if you would like it to do that. Down here you have navigation, Bluetooth, phone. So if you'd like to pair your phone, you can do that through Bluetooth. Um, this is a video application and settings, obviously. Obviously radio. This is a song application and then the clock. You can move these around to get to the app drawer. Go here. You can add extra apps to the home screen. So for instance, CarLink 2.0, that's what we use for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So I'll drag that over there like that. So I guess I'll sh show you real quick how that works. Um, again, you want to plug your uh, cord that you would normally use to plug your phone in. All right, so in this case, I'm going to plug in my Android phone here. I'll show you Android Auto. All right, so you see it automatically connected. If it doesn't automatically connect, you can click that CarLink 2.0. It's going to give you some screens on your phone here. And then proceed to connect. As you can see. So, all right, you can see that it just connected and started playing music. It is the new uh, look for Android Auto. You can see all the applications are available. Everything works as it should. All right, here's a shot of CarPlay working also. Works flawlessly. I usually only use wired because I like it to charge the phone, obviously while I'm plugged in. All right, so there's this kind of floating dot here that's on the screen. Some people ask, how do you get rid of that? 
So go to the applications. That'll be this touch assistant. So we'll click touch assistant and we're gonna hit display button and start automatically. We're gonna uncheck those and then we're gonna get out of here and then we're gonna force close the applications. You can see that is now gone. So they do include kind of a neat background, this Ocean HD. So if you click hold on there, or click live wallpaper, select the Ocean HD. And there you go. So now it's your background. Set at night, it's kind of neat. Okay, so something you want to set up pretty quick. We're gonna drop down again. We're gonna go into settings. There's multiple ways to get to this. You can get a device, sound, <clears throat> equalizer. All right, so this is where this radio really shines and why I said at the beginning of the video, this is the best stereo, doubled in stereo money can buy in my opinion, um, is because as you see here, we have a ton of settings for your graphic EQ. Um, you have a sound field. This is obviously your balance and fade. Surround sound. It's like a virtual surround that you can turn on and off. You can add bass enhancement. You can also get to your subwoofer controls here, where if you have the dedicated subwoofer plugged in, you can turn your amp on and off. You can also filter the bass to your front and rear speakers. And this is really important because when, when, once you add a subwoofer, you can use your factory speakers and you can cut the extremely low bass going to the speakers which will make them sound better since the subwoofer is handling all the bass so again i'm going to go here it does have presets uh i honestly think they need dialed in pretty much the one i start with is usually rock and then kind of dial up the highs a little bit and it gives a pretty good You can adjust the front and rear speaker separately if you want. I don't want to do that. And then there's obviously a loudness control, which boosts your highs and lows. All right, so I'm going to plug in my thumb drive that has external media. So there's two ways to use this unit, um, we'll say on the internet. So you can either connect to a Wi-Fi hotspot on your phone through Wi-Fi, you could use the internal SIM card if you have that. Uh, again, the bands, if you look on the specifications page for this, and they match up to your area. You could run your own SIM card all the time. If you needed data on this all the time, then you could actually create a hotspot from the unit um, for other people in the car. Uh, the way I usually do it is I just use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay um, to bring uh, the internet to the unit. And that's obviously inside of that environment. But... Uh, you can download standalone apps from the Android Play Store that is just like, obviously, you know, if you had an Android tablet or an Android phone. You can download any of the apps. So you can put Waze, you can put Netflix. I have another video that shows you how to watch Netflix on this unit. Obviously not while you're driving or for the passengers. Um, so I'll have a link to that in the description as well. It's a, There's a little bit of a workaround um, to try to get Netflix on here. Netflix does not want you installing it on this unit. Um, but you do need to sign in to your Google account. What I recommend doing is making a dedicated Google account for your head units. And the reason is, is because um, there was a bug where if you connected your phone via uh, Bluetooth and um, had the same Google account synced on your phone, it could mess with your contacts on your phone and wipe them out. So you can copy your contacts from your uh, Google account on your phone. This is obviously if you have an Android to another Google account and then update it that way. That way you're not messing with anything. And then I also don't want my primary Google account on my head unit because if I ever take the car in for service or something like that, I don't want people to have access to my Google, my Google account personal Google account. So I have one just for head units. I'm gonna go ahead, I just plugged a thumb drive in that has some content on it. So I can kind of give you a demonstration. Um, and there's a file manager. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy some of this stuff. So 
So I'm going to copy, and then I'm gonna go back to the internal storage. I'm gonna paste everything from the drive. This will take a little while, because I have very large movie files and audio files on here. With 64 gigabytes of internal memory on the unit now, and four gigabytes of RAM, that's plenty to put quite a bit uh, of storage on here. Obviously, if you wanted to run a lot of, like a ton of video, um, you're gonna have to put some kind of external drive on. Again, that's why I run the thing into the glove box with the USB cable. That way you can add an external hard drive if you wanted to very easily. Okay, so I copied um, some content. So one thing I wanna talk about just real quick is if you want to have a uh, navigation like I said, run on the head unit. I kind of mentioned, you know, you can use Android Auto, Apple CarPlay for navigation, but you can also download offline navigation apps directly to the unit. Now, see, so if I click the navigation button either here or here, the physical button, it will say no default application is set. Tap to set up. So if I click set up, it will allow you to choose the app. So you can just choose uh, Google Maps or Waze as your default navigation app. Again, you have to have data to run both of those offline. But there's also apps like you can download like iGo Navigation, um, Here um, Maps, and then you can set one of those. So even if you do not have um, any kind of uh, data connection and you are somewhere into a situation where you need uh, navigation, your phone doesn't work, you don't have any kind of data, you're you're kind of off grid. Um, you can run a standalone navigation app easily on the unit, just like any kind of uh, you know factory setup or aftermarket setup that has built-in navigation as well. All right. So, like in my case, I click navigation, and I have iGo installed on the head unit, and it will pull up the navigation directly on the screen. This is the offline navigation, so pretty neat. Come back out of here. All right, so now if I go into songs, um, I, I put a bunch of MP3s on here just for testing, so you can see. Obviously, you don't want any copyright problems, so I can't really just play something for you, but you can arrange um, all these songs and you can set favorites <clears throat> and browse, you know, different folders, album, artist, folder, uh, lists like that. It's got quite a good music player built in. If I click video right here, um, all the videos that I just imported will be in here. All right, it says forward driving, video is closed. You can go in here into the settings. All right, we're going to the settings. 3368. Brake wire for video in motion. We're going to turn that off. All right, so that will fix that situation. So now you can see. Watch really neat HD video. That's part physical vo physical volume control. Press to mute, and then obviously your steering wheel controls. Hit the next button on the steering wheel controls. It'll go to the next video. So one thing just to talk about real quick is how great the sound is. So even just using factory Honda speakers in the Pilot, it is a huge improvement over the factory stereo, even without the subwoofer connected. Once you get your EQ dialed in, it sounds great.
Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to it. Like I said, um, I'll have links in the description below where you can buy the radio. I'll have a link for the wiring harness from Joying. Again, a little bit of customization required on that. I'll have a link for this dash kit. Again, that's gonna require customization. It would be great if we could get um, a manufacturer's kit that was already cut to the right size, but unfortunately, like I said, there's a difference between like what is overseas and what we have here in the US. So that will just require a little bit of modification. It's not too hard. If you take your time, you can see it looks really good. The stereo is way better than any aftermarket Pioneer or Kenwood or Sony option out there. It sounds better, it works better, it does way more. Again, you do even have an option to see, look, you can even put a card in this slot right here, micro SD card, and you can run even more files off of that. So lots of options. Again, not a full um, tutorial on everything this can do, but I have a lot of other videos that'll be linked below to the playlist where you can see all that these uh, Android series can do because they do do a lot. Kind of the limit is the sky when it comes to the flexibility of having the Android operating system on here. And when I say Android, if you have an iPhone, do not be discouraged. That doesn't mean you cannot use this unit. It just, it runs on Android, but it will support Apple CarPlay and that confuses people sometimes. So if you have any questions, leave a comment below. As always, I really appreciate you watching the video. Um, be sure to like it if it helped you out and subscribe for more. Until next time, we'll see you later.